ABC 3340, of course, your weather authority, and we have live team coverage of the storms tonight. Dave and Brenda, I'm standing off of Martin Luther King Jr. Road in the Saps community in Aliceville, where many of the homes look like the one that is behind me here, just devastated. In this community, in this neighborhood, I mean, it was destroyed, and I lost it. I seen my house sitting in the, almost in the highway. It was I mean, I'm blessed. It was a miracle. Those storms left a path of destruction across North Alabama, killing three people in Jackson County. At this hour, we know at least seven tornado tracks have been confirmed by the National Weather Service. There could well be more. Tonight, the Weather Authority has crews in some of the hardest hit areas. Hey, take a look around me. You can see the devastation. It's like a bomb went off here. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, the owner of the strip mall was actually sleeping inside when the tornado hit right around midnight, but he got out okay. He only had a few minor cuts. Right now at five, picking up after an EF2 tornado. A piece of metal came flying by and stuck in that tree over there. Tonight we're in Macala working to give you a firsthand look at how the storm impacted the area. Several homes were heavily damaged after, after the National Weather Service says an EF2 tornado tore through the area Tuesday evening. ABC 3340's Benton Blandon is live in McCalla right now with more on how the storm has an impact on that community. Look at this van. It's pretty big and it should give you a sense of just how powerful Tuesday's storm really was. If you were here around 5 o'clock yesterday, you might say, this was a fast moving storm, but meteorologists with the National Weather Service say a storm that might have taken two to six hours to form really got here in less than an hour. When we come out, all this was out here. Thousands of scattered golf balls. It was so quick and you know, um, it took down like the ball house, which is there's probably 10,000 golf balls out here. Nathan Silver was working at the Bent Brook Golf Course when the tornado hit Jefferson County Tuesday. The quickness of it was scary. That was the scariest part. It was so fast. I mean, it was in the blink of an eye, really. It was so scary. You're looking at the tornado area right there. Meteorologists and first responders watching the radar were caught off guard. Around that 4.30, 5 o'clock time frame, boom, the storm just literally exploded. Jim Stefkovich with the National Weather Service rates the tornado as an EF2. His team is looking at damage stretching from Shelby County to the McAdory McCalla area. In this case, we weren't even sure there was going to be any severe weather. And then once the conditions came together, well, we dropped the watch and then the warning started flowing. The warning forced first responders into action to help the community where they do more than work. It was stressful because at the same time, we're worried about our own families at home. Uh, not knowing what's going on at our own residence. You never plan for, you're never ready for, but it, when there's an action, we have to take it, we have to go. So yeah, as we talked about, there are about 10,000 balls on this golf course. I've covered a lot of tornadoes in my years in news, and you know, I've never seen anything like this, but the folks here, they say they have a long way to go before they can really recover. This golf course is expected to open sometime next week, and the people who live in this area, they're probably going to be working on their homes for a whole lot longer. Another warm and sunny afternoon. Hang on, though. The weather is about to get interesting. Chief Meteorologist James Spann has been talking about a pattern flip. James, are we seeing the final days of 80 degree temperatures this season? Well, we can see an 80 into December down here in Alabama, but we got big changes coming up in the short term. We are close to 80 today, upper 70s now for Birmingham, Anniston, Gadsden, Tuscaloosa. But rain is on the way with a front coming in here late tomorrow night. The window for rain, 10 o'clock tomorrow night until 6 o'clock Saturday morning. The better coverage north of Interstate 20. Most of you getting under a tenth of an inch. That's not going to dent the drought. Now, last Thursday, the Waterworks implemented a stage two drought warning. We brought that to you as soon as we knew it. And the Waterworks says that customers really did a good job the first few days. But then again, demand on the system increased on Monday. At this hour, the Birmingham Waterworks Board has not triggered a stage three drought advisory, but that could soon change. ABC 3340's Linda Mays joins us in the newsroom. And Linda, expected rain this week won't do a lot to ease this crisis. Dave Brenda, now the state climatologist says we're looking at only a quarter inch of rain. John Christie saying that will do little to head off this crisis. The Birmingham Water Works was not on the conference call, but tells ABC 3340 the demand for water in our area is not being reduced enough. 
Happening right now, Jefferson County is now in the midst of a stage three drought. Birmingham Waterworks Board made the call less than two hours ago. ABC 3340's Jennifer Gonsolin is following the story. She joins us live from outside the Waterworks Board building. Now tell us what this warning means for the customers and their bills, Jennifer. Well, first of all, Linda and Wendell, I have to say it's a decision that we've all been anticipating, right? But the news I think today we've gotten that we didn't really want to hear. So what it means is that uh, there's now no longer a suggested uh, water conservation, but it's now mandatory for both customers as well as businesses. We interrupt this program for a special report from ABC 3340 News. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dave Beard in the ABC 3340 newsroom. We have breaking news at this hour to tell you about. As we speak, Fultondale High School is being evacuated. Now, within the last 20 minutes, a tanker truck crashed. ABC 3340's Melanie Ewell is on the scene right now. Melanie, can you tell us what has happened? Pam, right now, Fultondale police say they are not exactly sure how this accident happened, but you can see there is still an active scene. Good morning, Wendell. This is between the exit 113 and 115 in the northbound direction. A sign that was hit by a tractor trailer has shut down that roadway for hours now. As you can see, crews are working right now, getting a crane set up to help lift that sign. It's going to take them some time. Stephen, I know this is a breaking, developing situation right now, but at this point, do we have any idea if anybody was injured by these gunshots? If you stay with us for just a moment here, I'm going to take my microphone off and hand it out so we can speak to Chief Smith right now. Can, I just like to uh, say that this uh, individual confronted another individual uh, at this home, tried to steal their car. Police officers uh, confronted him and uh, shots were exchanged. ABC 3340's Vinton Blandon is live near the Brompton exit in St. Clair County. Vinny, what can you tell us? Uh, things look primarily the same, but all of the folks out here assisting, they are making progress. Let me back out of the way again so that you can see what everyone is dealing with. This is ABC 3340 News at 5. We begin with an ABC 3340 news alert. A state of emergency is now in place following a gas leak from the Colonial Pipeline in Shelby County. So far, some 250,000 gallons of gasoline have spilled at the remote area, which is located off County Road 91 and Colmont Road. As ABC 3340's Melanie Ewell learned, more than 500 people are working round the clock to try to stop this leak. Yes, I'm told the command post is about three miles down this road, but unfavorable weather conditions overnight cause a disruption. Vapor settled over this rural area, making it unsafe for workers. Because of that disruption, Colonial Pipeline is now saying the restart of the fuel line will be next week. Tonight we welcome a new member to our team, investigative reporter Brian Pia. He has been digging into Colonial Pipeline's past problems and has the latest. Brian? Well, Dave and Brenda, Colonial Pipeline has been spilling fuel throughout its massive system for 46 years. That's right, since at least 1970. Breaking news. Breaking right now, you are looking at a major explosion off River Road in Shelby County. We are looking right now at something that Colonial Pipeline passed along to us just a short while ago. They were confirming that they are working to restore line number one. We, and I want to stress this, we do not know that this is in any way related to line number one. That was the one that back in September for 12 days that we've been mentioning to you, that was the big leak at Colonial Pipeline and that was what caused gasoline prices to soar, et cetera. They fixed that by constructing a bypass. bypass. That bypass obviously is working. It is working at full capacity. However, Colonial Pipeline is working. We are now told to restore this line number one. I'm going to go right now, if we can, to Andrew Donnelly, who is as close as he can get right now. And he is with a spokesperson with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. What can you tell us, Andrew? Well, Pam, we're here at the staging area of Highway 13. I'm speaking with Captain Jeff Hartley with the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. Now, can you just give us an update on what's going on out here, please? Okay, uh, approximately 3 p.m. this afternoon, we got a report of an explosion uh, off of Highway 13 on River Road. Uh, we responded, and as you can see in the background, um, there's a large plume of smoke, uh, and there's a, a very hot fire out there right now. 
Significant new developments tonight in the Colonial Pipeline explosion. ABC 3340 has learned a contracting company involved in the work at the site has a track record of serious safety violations. Workers from the L.E. Bell Construction Company in Heflin were working on the pipeline in Shelby County Monday. That is when the explosion occurred. One worker who has now been identified by the Shelby County coroner as Anthony Lee Willingham died. Five other workers were injured. ABC 3340 News has been investigating the company. Brian Pia is in the newsroom right now with exclusive new details. Brian? Well, Pam and Linda, a spokesperson for the Col Occupational Safety and Health Administration, told ABC 3340 that the excavator operator who struck the pipeline Monday worked for the Ellie Bell Construction Company. Ellie Bell is a contractor that Colonial Pipeline hired to do excavation work that would lead to a permanent repair of the pipeline that leaked last September. OSHA, which is the federal agency charged with enforcing federal safety and health laws for workers, said Ellie Bell was cited for eight safety violations between 2009 and 2013 in Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. OSHA considers five of those violations to be serious. Three of them involved excavation work. A serious violation means a workplace hazard could cause an accident that would most likely result in death or serious physical harm. But OSHA says in those cases, Ellie Bell either didn't know or could not have known about those violations before they occurred. Monday, an Ellie Bell worker was operating a track hoe, which is a piece of heavy construction equipment. According to Governor Bentley's office, that worker struck an underground transmission gasoline pipeline. Now, we reached out to Ellie Bell about their OSHA violations. So far, they haven't gotten back to us. We also asked Colonial Pipeline whether they knew about Ellie Bell's safety violations, and if so, why did they hire them for this latest job? They didn't answer the question. But spokesperson Steve Baker said Colonial has worked with Ellie Bell for more than 30 years. A dozen days ago, the Alabama players and coaches and their families celebrated on the field at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Arizona after Alabama won its fourth national title in seven years, the 16th national title recognized by the school. It was one of the more entertaining games that's decided a national championship in the modern era. The Tide, of course, beating Clemson 45 to 40. Hello and welcome to our special coverage of the championship celebration in Tuscaloosa. I'm Mike Rada along with Jeff Spiegel. That's right. We are here to bring you the celebration of the 2015 College Football National Champions, the Alabama Crimson Tide. They know how to celebrate championships in Titletown. A parade is set to begin at any minute. What do you think about the, the, the chance that you guys get to, to walk down this road, University Boulevard, and see all of these fans here to celebrate with you guys? Uh, it just feels like we got another game today. And I, I like that feeling. Really. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's go to Joe Whalen now, who is uh, also along the parade route. Joe? Hey guys, uh, the parade moving along pretty quickly here. We're actually uh, not too far behind Nick Saban's car right now, and uh, he's been tossing out those little plastic Alabama footballs. You know those are going to be a hot commodity for the fans here. Live from ABC 3340, this is Your Voice, Your Vote 2016. In the race to become the next president, Donald Trump has been exceeding expectations and proving the polls wrong so far. And right now, Alabama Republicans are feeling good about Donald Trump's path to the presidency. But the Democratic Party remains hopeful right now. Yes, yeah, Cynthia Gould is in Birmingham at their watch party. But first, let's go to ABC 3340's Edward Birch. He is live at GOP headquarters in Edwards. Lots of excitement, but still some key states that are too close to call. Dr. Davis, you look at everything that has happened tonight, and I think one of the things locally, let's transfer what's happened nationally to local. You see a Brandon Falls in trouble. You see uh, votes that, that thought were in the bag and weren't. What is that saying about how Alabamians are voting? You have spent the past few days in Florida campaigning with the Hillary Clinton campaign. You just got back. Tell us how that went. Good morning. First of all, thank you all for having me. It was a wonderful experience. I, as an attorney, I had an opportunity to work with the voter protection team. It's talking about the impact that all of this could have on our state. Brenda? 
Pam, it appears Alabama politics are at a low point even by Alabama standards as we first reported Friday on ABC 3340 News at 10. Chief Justice Roy Moore is now suspended from the bench and could be removed over his attempts to block gay marriage. You'll remember Moore was removed from office in 2003 for his fight over the Ten Commandments monument. He now has 30 days to respond to the charges involving gay marriage. Governor Robert Bentley is being investigated by the House Judiciary Committee. He faces possible impeachment after an alleged sex scandal with his former senior political advisor, Rebecca Caldwell Mason. ABC 3340 has learned it could be another month before hearings begin. And then there's House Speaker Mike Hubbard. He's awaiting trial on 23 counts of felony ethics charges. Jury selection begins one week from today and opening statements would start the following week. Political experts say all of this equals one thing, Alabamians losing faith in their elected leaders. I think it also hurts people's attitude about government. I think it makes them more cynical, which is never good. I don't recall any situation in my lifetime or even historically where three of the top officials in the state were under such scrutiny. As far as the impact on the state, political experts say none of this is good for our state's reputation with the rest of the country, and that's bad for business. They say it matters when it comes to industry, recruiting, and whether people want to come here for vacation, in turn, spending their money here. You see, 3340 News starts now with breaking news. And that breaking news from Lee County tonight, where a jury found Alabama House Speaker Mike Hubbard guilty on 12 of 23 felony ethics charges charges he was facing. This, of course, a huge victory for the prosecution. They have worked for more than a year and a half to bring this case before a judge. ABC 3340 political reporter Lauren Walsh has been following this story literally for months for us. She is live in Opelika right now with more. Lauren. Dave, this verdict removes Mike Hubbard from office. He is no longer Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives, no longer a lawmaker in Alabama. Even just one guilty count would have done that, and the jury found Hubbard guilty on 12 felony ethics charges. So who takes over? Let's talk about what's next. Speaker pro tem Victor Gaston of Mobile now is the acting speaker until a new one is elected. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. ABC 3340's political reporter Lauren Walsh joins us now. Lauren, the speaker arguably is the most powerful elected leader in this state. And what happens through the speaker actually has an impact on every single Alabamian. Yes, Pam, the Speaker of the House in Alabama is extremely powerful. It's a position that controls what legislation makes it to the House floor for a vote. He assigns committees and committee chairmen, and the Speaker also has a huge say in how taxpayer dollars are spent. The legislature passes both an education budget and a general fund budget every year. Hey Facebook, a new breaking development we really want to tell you about from the Alabama State House. Representative David Faulkner, Republican from Mountain Brook, just filed a bill within the last 30 minutes, he tells me, and it would void Birmingham City Council's pay raise for the positions that would start in 2017. Stephen Quinn here in Wylam this morning, where as you can see, this is the end of a chase involving multiple Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies and this car behind me. We are told by authorities they believe that it might have been involved in a robbery of a pharmacy at an, another location. Hello everyone, we are down to our last hour of the volunteer helpline. We want to give you that number, 1-888-3340-222. We are here until 6.30 this evening, and we have this great group here. They're volunteering their time, and they want to be busy. They want to take your calls now and hook you up with some very important volunteer efforts throughout the community. United Way, a big part of all of this. What do you want folks to know? We want folks to know that there's many opportunities to donate food items and toys, and there are a lot of families in need. And hey everyone, and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Hope you're all getting to enjoy it outside on this beautiful day. Our news is going on at a special time today, 5.30 right before coverage of Game 7 of the NBA Finals. We will have exclusive video of a search for missing boaters on the Cahaba River that happened overnight. And also the gun control debate is heating up in Washington, D.C. We'll tell you what the U.S. Senate is planning on doing tomorrow. 
And a new way to pay at Walmarts across Alabama could be starting this week. We'll explain. Join us at 530.